right. Uh, welcome to Heavy Petting with Sherry Hardman. Today's guest is Josh Firestein. Hello. Hello, Josh. How are you today? Good. Um, this is actually one of my cats, but would you like to introduce him? Hey, we're on TV. Look. Wait, there was, hey, you're back at you. You want some treats? No. All right, you want to tell Willie us? Willie is 12 years old. He is very ornery today. He's trying to get out of here. Dude, I don't want to drop you. Nice claws. Look at those claws, Jerry. Yeah. That's, a, that's okay. Buddy. Huh. Apparently, Willie really? did not want to be on the show. Here, you're going to have the rest of the snacks, though. How's that sound? Yeah. He likes me. He doesn't want to be held, though. Yeah. Maybe that's it. Okay, well. Maybe I smell bad. Do I smell bad? Well, I didn't notice, but. Do I smell yeah. like dog? Well, he's used to dogs, so I don't know what that was all about. Ooh, do I, do I smell like Chinese people? Is that his problem? <laughs> Stop. Uh, okay, well, that's Willie anyway. All right. Okay, so <clears throat> let me get out of my weirdness that I'm in right now. So, <laughs> so I asked all my guests, like, do you have any stories about heavy petting of the human variety? That you could tell? Yes. Yes, I do. I didn't know what heavy petting was until... True. Like, what, True. five minutes ago? Yeah. I thought we were just going to be petting this heavy cat. And uh, he's not into it, so, uh, you know. Maybe I should have described what heavy petting is since you're you're the Ooh. second person that didn't know what it was. Yeah, okay. So we, lo we Googled it. Yeah. Googled it. And it said erotic contact basically stopping short of intercourse. Yeah, kind of like tantric sex. Well, it was like back in the day, it's what we called making out. Oh, so, yeah, snugging, hitting the, hitting the drive-in, or yeah. uh, what do you right. call it, the cliffs? What do you, um, where was the spot? Where'd you guys make out when you were well, we, we just in high to, school and like we college? We just went to the drive-in. The drive-in? Because we had the Valley Six down there Very right there nice. in Auburn. But, um, nice. But we don't really have to talk about it. So anything that has to do with dating or sex or the opposite sex or just anything like that would be okay. fabulous. Okay. Um, keeping with the theme, like uh, what you do as a kid, I guess, or high school, mm -hmm. like a, a ruffian. I, well, with the prom, with this girl, um, I won't say her name, but uh, uh, what's the prom with this girl? And she didn't want to go to prom with me. It was like, uh, she was just like a friend's best friend. Mm -hmm. And so she's like, yeah, I'll go with Josh. I didn't know that at the time. I know that now. But like, I, I was like, oh, cool. Claire's hot. Oh, I don't want to say her name, but Claire, she was hot. Oops. I don't know if she's hot anymore. Maybe. I hope she is. Good for her. That'd be nice. Uh, but I was like, yeah, she's a nice girl. I'd love to go to prom. So I went to prom, and then she was not feeling prom at all, or me, or anything. And I was like, oh, this is kind of weird. So, uh, you know, I was kind of hanging out, and she was like, oh, I just want to go home. And so I was going to take her home. And she just had me drop her off at a Chevron. So that's where we went. Her friend was at a Chevron, drunk at a Chevron. So I dropped her off there. And then I went home. And I got home at like 11.30 at night. And my parents mm -hmm. were expecting me at like 4 in the morning. Because right. they were like, it's prom. Have fun. Be safe. You know, whatever. And uh, I went home. And uh, went. And the protocol when I came home late was to always knock on my parents' door. Because I worked at Burger King. And so I'd come home like 2 in the morning. I'd knock on the door. And I'd hear like my dad and my mom go, Ugh. And then I would open the door and... I'd say I'm home, and they'd say, okay, and then I'd go to bed, and um, so that's what I did that night, and I went and I knocked on the door, and I heard, Ugh. and I opened the door, and uh, it turns out that was like the muffled voice of my dad eating my mom out. That was what that noise oh. was, and uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's just like, I, can, I don't even see my dad. I don't even see him, but I see like a lump under the covers, and my mom, and I'm like, oh, God, and I close the door immediately, and my mom's yelling at me, like, get out, get the fuck out, oh, get the fuck out, and I'm like, I'm fucking going the fuck out, and the, I close the door, and uh, all I hear, all I hear from my dad, my mom's screaming, all I hear from my dad is, who was it? Who the, who the hell do you think it was? Like, no one else lives here, it's just us three, and you think, like, some stranger just came in and then, like, politely walked out? Uh, Who was it? Your son. And then my mom, she wants to come out. 
talk about it. She's uh-huh. like, this, come with me to the garage, we're going to talk about this. I was like, no, I think you've been coming enough all night. You need to go back in your room <laughs> and you just need to settle this. You're adults, you can do that. I'm going to yeah. go to sleep and maybe burn the house down. Yeah. That's what I might do after burn out your tonight. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Golly. I thought I was going to have sex for the first time. But no, your parents did instead. Yeah, so I just watched them have sex for the first time. It was yeah. the first for everything. Now I watch them have sex all the time. It's great. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad that never happened to me. That's a good story. Oh, did your kids ever catch you? No. Not that you know not of. The, not that they know of. But not that they know of. I remember when I, was, when I was first dating Dave... He, we were sitting on the couch and he had his arm around me and he had my Ooh, boob cut yeah. and Noah walked in. One of these moves? Nice. And, and, and Dave yeah. walked, I mean, Noah walked in and it was kind of an awkward moment. But then after that, we would torture Noah by every time he'd walk in the room, Dave would go like this just to be funny, you know. Oh, man. Yeah. Sorry, okay. Noah. Sorry, Noah. It's the kind of mom I Sorry, was. Noah. Sorry, am. All right. Well, thank you for being here. Yeah, thanks for listening to my story about... Uh, yeah. Prom? The your worst parent, prom your parents ever had. live around here? No, they live in, well, they live in Nevada. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't ever have to face them after hearing this awkward story? No, probably not. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. I'm not getting up because usually I get up and it's in the frame and it like, like I'm, we're still, like I let's, get up, I get up too fast. Let's both get up and get in the frame. Let's ruin the frame. Let's just do it. Okay. Yep. All right. Ready? Right. Yeah. Set. Go. All right. That'll be good. <laughs> All right. So, Josh, do you have anything coming up that you'd like to promote? I do. Uh, when is this going to be released? Like two weeks. So, like the week after Thanksgiving. Week after Thanksgiving. Okay. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, yeah, I got a new show at Tacoma Comedy Club called Roast of Mania. Very cool show. We got four roasters. <laughs> Sherry's one of them. Sherry's going to be roasting my buddy Narn Van. And then we have uh, Mike Parker and uh, Rice Man, John Rice. So you might face one of those. If you beat Narn, you'll beat Mike or Rice Man. And then uh, I'll make fun of everybody and make a cute little slideshow. And everyone's going to do stand up. You get a fun show. December 9th, 7 30 at Tacoma Comedy Club. I'm looking forward to getting my ass beat by an RS. Roast to me. Be- ass beat? No. I'm going to try my hardest, though. <laughs> yeah? Mm-hmm. Easy. I got some jokes for you. Okay. Well, no. Narn's easy. Okay, good. He's been losing a lot lately. You heard it. Narn, you suck. <laughs> you heard it. You suck. You know, since we're telling Narn stories, you want to hear a quick Narn story? Yes, always. So yesterday, he came over and filmed his episode. Okay. And I probably shouldn't be saying this, but I'm going to say it. And before he got here, I'm like, Narn's going to mansplain something to me that I'm doing wrong with my show. And I even wrote it on a piece of paper oh, so that when wow. he did it, I could show it to him. And he didn't do it. And I was so disappointed <laughs> until today. Today, he sent me a message. You know what, what you should do? Is, and I almost took a picture of it and sent it back to him. You know, a picture of my note. But I didn't. So. Narn, mind your own business. I'm telling people. I'm telling people how to live their lives, man. That's oh, funny. that's so funny because that's a gnarling thing. That's so funny. <laughs> You've been pegged. All right. Do you want to get up? Narn's been pegged again? a few times. Yeah, let's do it. That's again. what I heard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Josh. That's gonna be good. Right. What's on her mind? She's a big, big girl in a skinny woman's world. Now she's a big, big girl. In a skinny woman's world Now she's a big, big girl Big, big girl